so the, we are waiting for a few folks, but this is Teachers Teaching Teachers on the 10th of May. Um, welcome. And Terry, you've been in a uh, Kuma space before or not? Yeah, I have. Okay. It's been a while since okay. I, it was pretty, pretty beta when I, <laughs> actually yeah. it's pretty alpha when I tried it last right. time. <laughs> right. Which is first? I don't even know. Um, okay. So the, um, one of the, uh, so you just need to know the uh, arrow keys moving back and forth. Um, yep. And the plus and minus keys go up and down, and everything is clickable. Um, and um, you'll so we'll point out some of that as we go. Okay. Um, there's this. Uh, what's probably new from when you were here is that there are these sound rooms. So as long as we're in the same room, we can hear each other. Uh, sort of over. Anyway, there's that. So tell us about AI and how you feel about it. Get us started just in a general kind of frame here. Um, Introduce yourself first. I'm sorry. Yeah. What have you been up to? And yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. I I have. My name is Terry Elliott, and I live in uh, cent South Central Kentucky. And oh. uh, I've just um, is near. It's near Mammoth Cave. I my wife yeah. and I uh, raise. Uh, we have a small flock of sheep. She works at the National Park Service as a guide at Mammoth Cave National Park. Let me ask you, are you going to go hear Yo-Yo Ma? We already did. Oh, my really? God. Yeah. So tell me about it. That must have been amazing. Sorry. It was uh, <laughs> just extraordinary. You know, there's a long history of playing music in caves. Uh -huh. uh, the bluegrass, bluegrass bands have been doing it forever. Bill Monroe did, did one in a cave just right before he died with his band. Uh, but every year they have, uh, they have a, a Christmas sing in the cave, at Mammoth Cave. And uh, as you can imagine, the um, the acoustics are, yeah, well, freaking eerie. Mm -hmm. And they took full advantage of this. Uh, so someone wrote a, I guess you'd have to say it was a libretto for for this piece, and it was a Louisville chorus, a Louisville orchestra. These are kind of slimmed down versions because. The place where they were doing it is called a place called Raffinesque uh, Hall, and uh, it's not huge. I mean, it's huge as far as caves are concerned, but uh, it always it was right. unreal. I, you know, I could have reached out and touched Yo Yo Ma while he was playing, and wow, and uh, uh, it was it was really a, a marvelous. And we got this. There was a dress rehearsal, and my wife was able to get tickets for family members. So it was almost, it was all people associated with the park in some degree or in the history of the park. Is it a national, it's in a national park. It's oh a, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. It's been a national park since the late thirties, early forties. Uh, so you should do right out down there. Yeah. Well, my, um, <laughs> my writing project is pretty much defunct. Yeah. Uh, ever since the. But you could do it. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, I I write there all the time. Because <laughs> it's, right. uh, it's an inspiring so place. Obviously, we could just keep going. Um, yeah. Just, just pass. Yeah, sorry. You you started it. I know <laughs> I did. Yeah, I know. <laughs> sorry. Oh, I'm not sorry. Sam Reed, welcome. Thanks for uh, staying up late for us. <laughs> Yes, he yeah. just had the session with me. <laughs> All right, Bonnie, Bonnie, Bonnie persuaded me. But in cool, cool. in uh, F FYI, Donald Trump is on CNN. So um, what is he saying? No, yeah. I don't want to know. Turn that off. No, no. <laughs> my, peop my, my people are watching it. So okay, okay, gotcha. So Terry, say, say a little bit about AI, and then and then we'll get going here. Sam, Sam and okay. uh, Bonnie teach teach in different schools in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. All right, and I I have retired from. I taught everything as a substitute from K through 12, and then as a high school teacher. And then I moved on to college. I taught at Western Kentucky University. Sam, you might <clears throat> mute while. Others... Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. That's okay. <laughs> um, and what do I think of uh, of AI? Yeah, just it's a, just to get just us started, sort of mixed bag. Um, Mm -hmm. I think the possibilities uh, for uh, uh, disaster are e are fairly easy to predict, and that the possibilities for, I mean, it feels like it did when 
the the uh, the internet turned from text based to graphical. It's the same sort of like, oh, isn't this amazing? It's yeah. freaking amazing. So uh, I have mixed feelings about it, uh, but that doesn't stop me from playing with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what? When when I first started dabbling in it, I remembered that moment when I was able to download the um, Harlem Renaissance uh, crisis, the crisis Mm -hmm. from the internet and look at it, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, on my computer screen. I I remember that night and I I yelled to my wife and said, throw the TV away, (laughs) (laughs) which hasn't happened, but which is anyway, but yeah, it feels like that, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, And Christina might be joining us. (laughs) I don't know why she went. She's over there. Cool, cool. In, she's on long division. Yeah. All right. Hello. Hey, uh, welcome, welcome, everybody. Hello, okay. Hello. And David Cole, just so um, Terry. just so Terry knows who you are, quick introduction if you don't mind. Terry. Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is David Cole. I'm an uh, originally my very first career for 13 years as a teacher of writing, third grade, fourth grade, ninth grade, twelfth grade, college, adult ed, um, and then I went into publishing and education technology and. Through that, I uh, got to know the writing project and did a whole lot of work with them across their network in a bunch of different settings around digital media and making and other things like that. And I've been, I've been really very interested to see how AI is taking hold in education. And it's been a real honor to be tracking this conversation with you guys on the NWP studio and in this conversation here. Cool, cool. David, so, David used sorry. to do like pack your notebook stuff. Yeah, I did. Uh, the writing project was a great supporter of this hacker notebook project we did, where we were putting circuitry into into traditional notebooks and mashing up electronics and paper and writing, um, and that was great. The writing project did that with us in a number of settings. It was it was it was wonderful. A fellow tinker, I think. Of you. Yes, exactly. Okay. <laughs> Good way to put it. So. Um... And so that's one of my students. One of your students. Okay. Well, so hi. these students, are, if, if they want to join our conversation, they're welcome to. Hi. Yes. I, and, but they may be here just to get their assignments and stuff, too. So yes. that's all good. This is sort of their space, um, <laughs> which, yes. is, which is cool. Um, so, Bonnie, how do you want to start? Do you However want to- you want, whatever you tell me to do, I'll do. <laughs> So um, it would be great if everyone could get logged in at Now Comment. Um, on Monday evening, um, I, I said to Jeremy, let's take a risk. Let's, let's, let's make it live. Um, so uh, we are now live on the site. You don't have to go to the staging site or anything. So you want to get into nowcomment.com. Um, and um, we are, and I'll sh- kind of show you what we did today in Bonnie's class. Can we start that way? If that makes some sense. I think that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so, here. Oh, so a couple different ways to get there. You can click on the banner here beside me. Mm-hmm. You can just click on now long division. That'll take you to the collection. Yeah, the book, the and then you have to log in somehow. Yeah, the book over there, you can log in there. Um, that's what I'll do. And I need to read this. I haven't read it. It's, it's a good It's a good end of the year read. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm not uh, very well. Let's get going here. I let me just say, w- without prejudicing this too much, that I was thrilled to be in your class today. It was <laughs> it was great to be here, uh, be there. Um, I the 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 back and forth between you and your students is wonderful. I'm glad you let me interrupt that and play with them too. Um, the uh, and they have been reading long division for a few weeks now um there are almost a thousand comments on the we we break the novel up into five sections about a thousand comments on the first section um you're getting close there on the second section and hopefully they'll finish the book who knows um we'll see Mm -hmm. um and i'm going to present my screen um and i'm pretty sure everybody here is familiar enough with um, yeah. with now comment that we don't have to go there and explain that or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so I'm sharing my screen now. You can ju- I, I think you can just follow along and you can tell me what to do, that kind of thing, and mm-hmm. or you can kind of play with it yourself. 
Okay. Um, it's sort of what we say to students too. I'm getting back to that screen right now. So I know what's going on here. Okay. So first, you know what, Paul? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, go I'm ahead. Say that um, my students never did this much annotating at, I mean, ever. Never have done, and we've used certain uh, all kinds of apps. And well, you were a big a hypothesis, big in what, hypothesis, yeah. Yeah. also big in buying colored post it notes <laughs> for them to do. Now, I have a couple of long division books from last year where the children, I mean, they're colored tabs. I told them don't take it off so that people can see just how to use um post it notes for annotation and how they color coded it. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I mean, they're, they're kind of blowing this up further than I can, more than, than I can even keep up with them. I can't keep up with everything that they're doing. Um, and a and lot of you, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah. But a lot of it has to do with AI Mojo. So before today, they were going from now comment and bouncing onto youth voices using the AI mojo and then coming back into now comment and then talking to each other in class verbally or to me, or they even email Paul a lot. My students are like, well, can I ask them? I'm like, just email them and see if you get an answer. And Paul normally answers them too. Um, but today was even more fabulous because now AI Mojo is um, is in literary lenses embedded on Now Comment. Because I kept saying, Paul, well, when are you going to put it on? When are you going to put it on? These are seniors in high school. They're about to graduate. They only have about 20 more days of school. But my students are highly engaged in this. By the time we got to this time of year before, the students didn't want to do anything. Well, now they're doing it. And even as I'm seeing them pop into this room at nine o'clock at night, I mean, that's really exciting um, to see them so interactive in text. Um, and but I, I think it also has something to do with them being able to see each other's stuff. Like that, that kind of peer to peer stuff. So you want to go in and see what, what she, she said to us or what he said about this, right? I think that happens a little bit, probably too. Um, and they can come in. But I one thing I made Paul a believer because yeah. I told him it was going to be too much <laughs> if we put all four of my classes together in one text. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, no, 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 it'll be all right. Well, yeah. after seeing them thousand doggone comments <laughs> on one text. He said, oh yeah, let's break it up into each different group so it's a little more manageable. Because yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I knew, I said, it's no way I can do that. No way. Marina. Hey, Marina. Welcome. Um, so uh, we'll you catch you up. Explain as we to them about the uh, how do you, where do you want me to go? Hey, so, so, no, just so I, I'm I just really excited. To... This is how Paul and I do it, even with the children in class. This is how I am. I'm really a scattered brain because I'm always thinking. I always want to do something. I always want to so, take my children to the next level, um, and and I want them inside, in front of the use of AI and not in the back end. And so, I don't like that people are saying only that AI is for cheating. I don't like that. Uh, yeah. And so I have to, I'm showing my students all these different ways, and some of them are really brilliant children. All right, Sa Sam wanted to jump in there for a second. Oh, sorry, and, Sam. And, and maybe uh, LA. No, no one, one, hold on, I got to go to the other room. <laughs> one. <laughs> One was, I was going to ask that question about uh, uh, if, you, if you had other kids uh, engaging from other, other classrooms or other spaces, um, but it sounds like that, that was... Uh, it's, that, so far, it's, it, just bon, it's just bon, uh, Bonnie's kids from the four different classes. Yeah, because you know, we... we, we um, oh, but you're welcome. Would, you can... No, yeah. I, no, I, no I, I, I'm just telling Bonnie, I worried about like it being too much, but eventually, uh, like, um, when we were doing a born a crime and we had some other kids that were doing born a crime, we were like, yeah, let's all do it at the, on the, 
because often mm -hmm. like it's nice to find the digital crumbs from somebody else and like you can feed off of that and remix off of that but um but the question i'm i'm, I'm really excited for you and your students bonnie and my kids kind of got like intrigued by it but they didn't get into it as as much as i'm seeing uh your your kids and I, I part of it is i don't know if it's like you know we have I don't know what what that difference is. Like, what is it because they're seniors, and that that's kind of like a maturity thing. Because I've got tenth graders. Well, or you got other Sam. You had the most success whenever you did both paper stuff and then took the paper stuff to now comment, right? Just yeah, to, and that's what Bonnie, what Bonnie mentioned, yeah. and yeah. when Bonnie mentioned like using the post its and uh, using the the different different forms and the modalities to, to engage kids with like annotating and comment commenting. It's, it's really, really cool. All right. Let's, uh, sorry. Um, Terry, did you want to say something to, or you're clearing your throat? <laughs> you're on mute, Terry. Um, yeah. One of the things that I tried that, um, and I don't know if students, if students in your classes can do this, but um, one of the things I played with was to take a prompt, one of uh, I asked uh, Chat GBT to write a play with two characters that argued the pros and cons of AI. Mm -hmm. And then it said, fine, super duper. It did it. And then I rewrote the, tr the chat. I put, so there you, there you got a play. And then you can, you can publish that on a blog or wherever. And you can share it. And what I did was I shared it for people to uh, annotate it, socially annotate it. Mm -hmm. So, and then what I want to do is I want to take those social annotations, copy them all, and run them back into Chat GPT and open up the conversation to three characters. So, I mean, you know, I don't know if that's useful to anybody, but I mean, you could say create a Socratic dialogue with the issues in this book, with this issue in this book mm -hmm. between two characters. I don't know. Yeah, and then yeah. use social annotation. It reminds me of some other things we could talk about. I, I want to try to jump into what we did today, um, if, if y'all don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then just kind of, uh, so we, I think in at least two of the three classes, uh, we worked with this paragraph 34. Mm -hmm. uh, so would you mind reading it uh, for us, um, Bonnie? Okay, paragraph 34. Yes, I couldn't believe grandma was talking like that in front of that lady. Her voice, her body, everything shrunk. It was like she wasn't even my grandma anymore. I never heard my grandma say ma'am to someone who was younger than her. The rumor was that grandma actually brought the Jerry, not Gary curl to Malahatchee from Milwaukee back in the early 80s. Now she was acting like she couldn't even pronounce it right, all because she was talking in front of a weird-looking white woman who couldn't even pronounce so and do. All right. I chose this one for this class in particular because they had already made, what, 23 or it wasn't 23 yet. But yeah. they had already made quite a few comments on this paragraph. There were right? like 20, I think. I yeah, think. great. 19. Um, so, so that's one thing. Um, we are at least imagining that they wouldn't come to AI until they put their own voice on here. Mm -hmm. um, and, but here's, how, here's just quickly how it works. We choose that paragraph. We then ask AI mm -hmm. to find, there's a whole list. The list is there in Kumo Space, but... Um, you can see it if you. We'll, we'll show it to you. And now comment. Yeah, it doesn't pop up in, but I'm choosing. You can't see the list. I know, right? Space. But there is a list uh, right up to the right. If you click on it, it'll get big. Let me see. And now comment or Kuma? no in Kuma Space. Um, where is it? Is it worth doing? Oh yeah. Uh, or go go to it at the yeah, end. Yeah, if you go just up from Christina. You'll find a, a like a black box, and if you click on that, it, you'll be able to see it. Oh yeah, it's there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you find that, that's great. If you don't, 
there'll be another moment where you can see them. They're, they're not organized into um, five different kind of categories going from, and, yeah. and da David, David, thank you for this. Um, you started us thinking this way. Starting from just sort of like, okay, get just give us the facts, give us some interpretation, uh, get creative, and then there are literary lenses and then habits of mind. Um, you know, not perfect categories, and we can keep thinking about categories, but we're going to choose the gender feminist scholar. Um, does somebody have a question about this paragraph for us? And and I'll tell you, Paul picked that first because the name of this English course is called Gender and Lit. Right. So mm -hmm. it just lends itself to what we're talking about, what our overall um, curriculum, my overall curriculum objective is. Great. A anybody have something for us to jump in there that we would ask a gender feminist scholar? About that paragraph. You got it. We're waiting for you. <laughs> I don't know. They're slower than your students. Uh, uh, my <laughs> students were amazing. They were amazing. <laughs> it's okay. Like, it's okay. Should we just put, anybody have a thought? Yeah. Feminism and race? I don't know. Like. Okay. So what? pose a question. Uh, about that conversation, Christina. about what the narrator was saying, Christina. Yeah. Um, so what about the power dynamic? Sorry. Yeah. 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 Go ahead, That's Sam. A good question. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like simple question. Like what's up with the power dynamic here? <laughs> what's up? Good. I like it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now. Christina and Bob Montgomery, I already told him I'm blaming him, um, put us on this thing about three or four weeks ago where, hey, wouldn't it be nice if we could give some context to the to the AI so that, that it knows who it's talking to, right? So we have created this note about the reader. You can go into this note. Um, there were other things we tried. I'm not going to go into that. We, we kind of weaponized the buy box for a while. I'll just leave that statement there. Um, and, and we pulled back on that. And But you could put in here a note about the reader saying, hey, I was I was raised as a fundamentalist Christian in the North. Um, and, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I, I don't really, you know, you could you could describe yourself um, in this note and then AI will take that into consideration when it comes back to it, right? But it, we can also leave it blank, which I'm going to do right now. Oh, because I was going to say, I know a lot oh, of powerful yeah. black women. I know a lot of, I mean, I grew up with powerful black women. Oh, we could, That's sorry. A good yeah, yeah. I grew up, I grew up with powerful black women and they were from the South and I, you know, I don't know. I'm, I, wanna... I, mean, I am, I'm, I'm genuinely curious about this power dynamic here. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I, I wish I hadn't hit it yet, but I did. Um, and so next time we'll, we'll put that in. But here's what we get back, right? And I'm, Der I'm, I'm basically showing Terry this because we haven't shown him this yet. Um, Sam, would, would you mind reading the result? Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks. We're noticing a clear power dynamic here between grandmom and the white women who can't pronounce so and do. Grandmom changes her behavior and language. And it seems like her body language and identity changes too when she's around this woman. How does the text reinforce, critique, or challenge traditional definitions of power and privilege based on race, gender, and class? How does it challenge us to contemplate the objectification of people of different genders, classes, and races? What does the dispute over the jerry curl symbolize about the dynamics between grandma and the white woman? How would we interpret grandmom's willingness to accommodate the white woman's mispronunciation of certain words? How can she interpret grandmom's willingness to modify her behavior in this encounter? What could the author be trying to tell us about the meaning of power in these relationships? Mm -hmm. Which it just gave us more questions. <laughs> the students were floored by that. They were like, wait a minute, it just gave us questions. And then, yeah. 
But oh, oh I'm, I'm being just like a student in her body. I'm responding just, just like they did. Yeah, no, no. I mean, but we are them, and they are us. <laughs> So I want to point out that the, the question at the top, um, I, I hit resubmit, which is always a possibility. I did not change the question. We could have changed the question when we did that. Mm -hmm. um, and here we've got, uh, I, I don't know what else to do. Um, <laughs> I, I'll read it. Um, so as, as we're reading this, and this is sort of the exercise that we want to think about, um, we're asking ourselves, which of these two is more helpful more honest and um, and har and more more harmless. That is correct, but okay, it doesn't sound all right. So um, we've got to ask why Grandma is acting so subver subservient to a woman who is younger and speaking a different language. Um, what is being said about the power dynamics between men and women in this text? Mm. Why does the author draw attention to the language barrier between the two characters? And can it be viewed through a gender lens? Um, how does the author use the description of the Jerry, not Gary, curl to enforce the gender roles in the story? Why does grandma, so, why is grandma so compliant to this weird looking white woman? And what can we learn about that? Let's reread the text and explore these questions on our, in our reply. Uh, any preference here between these two? The second one's a little bit more. All right. <laughs> we're doing a workshop, right? So we don't have to be exactly right here. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to choose that one. Just to notice, we could go in and edit some of this. Like, um, mm -hmm. is there anything about men in here? Um, yes, there was. The grandfather's in there, right? Is he? In, the, no, in this no. paragraph, is there anything about men? I it was in the second one. Yeah. Didn't the grandfather? No, no grand. Can it be viewed as a gender lens? I thought it said a men and a women. I, I can't read it anymore. I would I would correct that if it said men, because I don't think there's any mention. Oh, yeah, no. Um, what is being said oh, about the power men? dynamics between men and women? So I just want to give this as an example. Um, like... I kind of feel like that's not an accurate mm -hmm. analysis. Is that fair? Because there's no real, I don't think that's there. There's no reference to men in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to leave it like that then. So mm -hmm. again, that I feel like is quote unquote more honest to the text. And so, and that's sort of my responsibility because when I hit start conversation, it's going to pop up on, over here as there's a few here now. But um, <laughs> that's crazy. Well, this is what we were working that on one. today, right? Right, yeah. Yeah. So there it is, the Gender Feminist Scholar with, with Paul A's edits, mm -hmm. right? All right. So that's what we did. Um, hey Paul, I have a question. Yes, yeah, please, please interrupt. So I was going to ask in you. These, in, these, in these AI responses, are you uh, if you set the are, are you controlling the settings for the amount of characters or words that the AI responds to? Are you? Uh, uh, it, it provides this like there are probably ten questions in each of these things, uh, and it works like a real uh, conversation starter. Are you controlling the amount, the way the output is set, or is that something the user does, the learner does? So Say, I, I want the, one specific question. I want two. Um, both of them kind of go chunk, and there's a bunch of like many, many directions to go. I'm just curious, and maybe this is just the start of it, and I'm just not. No, right, and and, and some of the feed, some of the feedback I think in every class was that like it's too much, mm. right? Sure. Um, mm -hmm. so, can't, uh, can't you yeah. all just tell the prompt limit your yes right. discussion to uh, two bullet points or three questions mm -hmm. or whatever? Sure. And, Yes, so, so we're going to experiment with that a little bit. Um, so yes, so could you, but here's what I, when you do that, sometimes you don't, you don't, you, you get, you don't get the smartest things. Right, you don't get what you need. <laughs> so what we right. were saying to the students was then take out what you think is not necessary um, for right now. Just remove right. it. 
because it's just, something sorry yeah. about the students because like here if i look at that response and then i look at ryan and Antas anastasia's uh-huh yep, yep comments they're actually like their comments are really interesting <laughs> you know it's like the ai's comments are kind of parroting and mm -hmm. But Ryan's talking about like his experience code switching, right? And like, mm -hmm. and you know, Anastasia is, you know, just recognizing the authority pieces here, right? Like the role and all that. So, so did working with the AI inspire them to go there, or I don't know. I guess I'm wondering. So, about the so that was there before the mm. AI. But what they said AI was doing for them when they were seeing these responses, they said it was adding to their vocabulary. It was helping them think through some of their prime, their first thoughts of what they read in the text. So it was helping them. It was, it was like a scaffold for them yeah. to take them to another level or even present a different perspective that they may have thought but they didn't dabble in. And I would say I, I, there's no uniformity, but there's a there's a pretty good range of skepticism with your students where, you know, some say, some say, well, I, I really love what AI gave me. Others say, you know, that's BS. I don't care about it. But mm. so but I think there's a nice conversation. I don't think they take it as, you know, oh, I need to do this exact like they don't devalue their own voice when they up against the AI? Let's put it that way, I think. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Hey, hey, Bonnie, another practice question. Um, in general, uh, are you used, did you, particularly in youth voices or in any other form, like, are you having kids like, like uh, for the peer review, like for the AI review, what are you, how are you using the AI to help kids like uh, assess their responses or like give them feedback. I'm, I'm just curious. So um, for that, that was in youth voices. That's, I mean, this, we just rolled out today. So mm -hmm. one, one way that I really, and Paul does, maybe he knows this. I get them involved with this is I'm like, you all are working with the creator of the platform. You know, these students like to create things and they want to be leaders. So they want to be in the front. And so working, you know, you're working with the creator of a platform. They've never been able to do that. I have a lot of students who want to be engineers. So when Paul was even talking about setting this up, I said, isn't that engineering, though? So then we started using words like engineering versus just um, set up and prompt. We talked a lot today about prompt. Now, as far as the review is concerned, that happens with other peers. I haven't taken them as the individual and peer reviewing AI. They critique AI like nobody's business without even asking them to do it because they know when it doesn't feel right. And I, I, I'm not even gonna say sound right. It, it's the feelings that they get based upon the words that are written by AI alone. And then I always make it so you are smarter than AI because it cannot do anything without your input. So what did you put in? And how do you want to alter that in order to get more of what you thought you should receive from that. So that's how I talk about it. Cause, but really, I'm letting them go. I'm not doing that much teaching right now. It's, it's not that much teaching going on. They're teaching me. So I'll just, I, I'll just say very quickly, one of the things we also experimented with was um, you can go to Sorted up here. And, and get just your comments um, on any of these documents. So we had them go do that, find, copy all of their comments from a, a particular section. Do Isaiah, then, Paul, Isaiah. He's, he's I, I don't want to, I, I don't think we have time to 
do it right now. You can sort so we can see it on oh, the side. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sure. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> Is Isaiah in this crew? Um, uh, yes. Okay. Um, and then and then we we popped it into um, Youth Voices, and and used a template that sorted their comments into three themes, mm -hmm. and then and then quoted from their own comments, um, and then they kind of analyzed that. Um, not sure. Anyway, I think we need to practice that a little bit. Yeah, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but it's an interesting possibility trying to address a problem that I've always had, which is how do you get kids rich comments from rich language in their comments into their essays later, right? Um, so that's what we're trying to do. Um, I'm coming down to Isaiah here. Mm -hmm. Burry is also... Fury. Mm -hmm. Fury, sorry. Here's Isaiah. Well, you kind of broke yes. up. I'm... Sorry, oh, sorry. You kind of broke up for me. Could you repeat what the, could you repeat what the pro like the teaching problem that you were trying to solve? Yeah, the teaching problem is this. Isaiah has Was, his thirty. Uh, you kind of broke up again. Oh my. Uh, am I here now? Yes. Uh, yeah. Is it me or is it you? It might be Christina. <laughs> you're not breaking yeah, up. For you're me. popping in and out. That's you. It's but it's okay, everyone it else. Us. Us. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. I'll repeat it though. Well, I'll, come back, I'll come back if everybody else. All right. Okay. So what we did is we I'll come out back right. in. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, while she's doing it, why don't we why don't we go on to another example? Can we do that? Oh, first of all, Terry, um, this is kind of new to you. What are you thinking? What are you seeing here? What are your questions, thoughts, ideas? And David, please interrupt when you would like. Anybody. Well, I think the way I've been, I didn't have this as a baked in tool. Yep. Okay. Yep. And what I'm more interested in is the comments themselves, even if they are based on questions from the AI. And then I want to reroute the questions back in the, the answers to the questions and the comments back into the AI itself and then begin asking questions, you know, creating prompts that can address not only what the AI has said, but what the students have commented upon. So uh -huh. you get, so you, I mean, it's, to me, it's the thing that, that I, that you're talking about, Bonnie, when you say how, how engaged the kids are with this, because I want them to be even more engaged than that. I want them to, con you know, this is just a, I, I mentioned in a, a comment to you that this is pre-thinking. Mm -hmm. This is, this is the kind of stuff that needs to go on before they get to, drafting, composing, and carrying on. And I just think, unless they get inured to it, unless they get, they just say, oh, well, it's just AI. It's just another tool. Uh, if they don't do that, then you know, we, we stand, stand a chance of having a whole new kind of school. Yes. Maybe we won't call it school. They're not looking at it, Terry, like a tool for you know, like school. They, I don't think they're looking yeah. at it like that. I can, I can see that. Thank so, you. Christina, can you hear me now? Hello? Oh, you're probably uh, muted. Yeah, I, I can hear you now. Thank okay. you. Okay. So I'll just repeat it quickly. So so the problem is the, the one like Isaiah has 33 amazing comments that he made on this section of the novel, right? Uh -huh. And then when we ask him to write an essay about it, often they start cold, right? They don't go back to there, those thirty-three oh, wonderful yes, comments. I got it. Okay. So, you know, so ha so that whole process of going through your comments again, finding the themes in them, um, and then trying to write out of that is a pretty c hard thing to do. If AI can do that for you, you know, maybe it's not perfect, but it'll give you some framework. It, it seemed like a, a a nice place for AI to fit in. Right? Great. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Cool. You know, one thing, Paul, can I throw one thing out there? Please. I, I've not, I've, only, I've seen examples of this, but I haven't done it, but I'm struck by this listening to the conversation and seeing the amount of output that your kids are doing, Bonnie. I mean, if Isaiah, for example, has 33 comments and there's a, there's a function that it naturally grabs up these comments and then asks for, creates a 10 point summary on what the key themes are on Isaiah's comments, mm. Paul, that, that step yeah. process of, 
you know, it's easy to have these spontaneous reactions. It's very engaging. Mm -hmm. Kids come back to it. There's a lot of stimulus. They feel really recognized in their ability to project themselves into these prompts. They, the feedback is great. Look at us. We're all reading it. But I mean, if there was a structured scaffold that fairly quickly gathered up a whole bunch of feedback on a chapter or on two paragraphs, say mm. one wrote and then said, can you draw out the themes for me? If I mm -hmm. were Isaiah or I would like, oh, that's what I was. It's another way to do some metacognition and have someone sort of mirror back to you. I wonder if that might be a good springboard for a learner to say, oh, this is kind of, oh, that's an interesting way to see what I was thinking. Let me start writing towards that. You know, I get and what you're certainly saying. Certainly all, all their comments are sitting in a database. It, it, right, it exactly. Would be pretty, yeah, it's all yeah. there. I'm just, I, yeah. I keep thinking of this is, it's, it's a really good, I keep hearing this is all about tasks, right? And breaking, if the ta what's, what are the thinking tasks that can advance a student into composing that mm -hmm. much more prepared, you know? And I wonder if some of these, recursive loops could gather things up and maybe the prompting is going to scaffold pre-thinking and then can gather things up in a pre-thinking organization and then spit something back. So that effort might be sped up things because kids don't naturally go. It's hard to go back to stuff. You know, you already have put out a bunch of energy. It is. Yeah. It's even hard for them, Dave, to wait for what AI yeah. will do. And I kept oh. saying over and over, as soon as you press the button, the output is not coming immediately. You have oh, wow. to wait. You have to be patient. You know, you wow. push the button. A whole minute. Wait. <laughs> yeah, wait. Yeah, yeah. And what is it? A whole minute, Paul? But I had to say, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. have yeah. to wait. Because <laughs> they're used to push a button and something happens instantaneously. But by the way, right. the the worry that 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 you know going through your 33 comments and finding the themes is a good learning thinking exercise i absolutely probably <laughs> but what we found is that when we let ai do it they don't isaiah doesn't just automatically say oh yeah those are the three things He'll say, you know, they left this out. They left that out. So, so the thinking still happens, right? It just begins the process, I think. Um, and, and we did that, um, Dave, uh, and then we posted it on um, Youth Voices, what AI, how AI took their comments and use it. Okay. And then they, yeah, and that, we did it. And that process was a little clunky, back and forth yeah. kind of stuff, copy paste. Really? So yeah, Dave's just suggesting a, a but uh, yeah, Dave, you did you you synthesized what we did in one platform. However, I like the clunkiness of that because okay. students like being all over the place right now. They they're yeah. all over the place. So if you if you just streamline everything for them, they might become disengaged. Mm -hmm. All right, I want to try. I want to try another one if we could just. Uh, um, sure. And uh, one of the fun ones. So, I'm going to choose an, an edgy TikToker, and I'm going to talk about that one because the oh, student yeah. did this one. Um, somebody also made one called Kobe Bryant, spelled this way. Um, we could try that one. Wow. Let's yeah. try that. Let's, Let's do the TikToker. Let's do the okay. edgy TikToker. So the edgy, the edgy TikToker. Um, I had created a TikToker. Um, do we have a question here? Um, <laughs> Same paragraph. Uh, should we ask the same one? What about what? A, what about what was the, the power? Question? What was your question, Sam? Yes, yeah, Sam, Sam. Unmute. Oh, question was up. what's up? What's up with the power dynamic? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I, I don't think they say power dynamic. I say I think they say what's up with grandma here. Yeah, they would. All right. Um, and, and Sam, you were, you, uh, do you want to say something about, we'll make you the reader. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, my grandma may take no mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. Well, what was that? My and how about we talked about that they, today? They take, my, my grandma may take no mess from from nobody. Mm -hmm. What's the from, What's the verb? My grandma may take. Ain't. Ain't. ain't, ain't. Oh, ain't, okay. Ain't. Sorry. Mm hmm. 
See, and and I think it's going to be really interesting to think it about is. to think <laughs> about what you want to say about yourself based on the text and based on your question, right? Um, and and see what that does. Well, Paul was very he 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 was very um, in a leader mood when he said, "But remember, you're feeding information into a platform." Do not share anything that you don't want other people to know or that you don't want um, the AI to feed off of knowing this part of you. So, I mean, he, he was really, it was really great in how he talked about that. David, can I call on you to read? <laughs> so. uh, let me squint here. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Can you read? Yeah, I can do. Um, okay. Our 45-second surprising viral-worthy TikTok video starts with a close-up of our grandma's face, and then zooms out to show her take stealthy stance to take her take take her to show to show her take show her taken stealthy stance, get, getting ready to lay something down, fading into a sepia filter. The sound of her voice, strong and sure, fill the background as if raised to speak truth to power. Mm. Our grandma starts talking. I ain't got no proof. Who I say I ain't got to prove who I am. This uh, this is who I am, and you ain't gonna, you ain't the one to take talk me like that. And at this point, the video filters become darker, deeper, despair, and the song rung even uh, even louder. As the video progresses, we hear her body, we see her body get more and more tense, her hands getting more and more ready. These are the moments that tell us that Grandma ain't talking to us from nobody. <laughs> So it's the scene TikTok gets wild with her. creative filters, stickers, and other edits. The music builds with a dramatic and ostentatious flair. A series of quick cuts and zooms, we see the victory moment when Grandma says to the woman, girl, I don't have time for all that mess. <laughs> At this point, the music fades and all is quiet. Grandma is victorious. But what will she do next? That's the question we, as the viewer, are left with. Will you join us in the comments and give us your opinion? My grandma ain't take no mess from nobody. Will yours? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I don't know. If it, I don't know. Does this help us understand the text? I don't know. It, no, no, it, 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 help, it helps us know, like, in a different context, in Go a ahead, different sir. power dynamic, your grandma is going to, you know, she's going to, she's not going to respond like this grandma. Like this is a counter response in some ways. Yeah. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. I liked it. It's also <laughs> multimodal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like you can, it, it takes you, it lets you start thinking about the text maybe in a more dimensional way. Yes. And, and at my school, because it's project based learning, the students make videos all the time for their projects. I said, oh, look at this. You all have um, set directions and you know what to do, zoom in, zoom out, what filters. So it was really funny. And they laughed just like we did. Just now. Maybe, it reminded me of um, Peter Elbow, one of Peter Elbow's mm -hmm. prompts is loops, yeah. movie in your mind, right? Mm. Um, so, like, in, this is like the the modern version. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Paul, so Paul, just FYI, um, mm -hmm. so we're uh, in our um, now comment uh, the with the transcript of the podcast. Um, oh yeah, yeah, uh huh. And so I'm going to have the kids. I'm going to show this the to Tulsa the kids one, tomorrow. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Blind spot. I'm yeah, gonna, okay. Uh, and again, I had them do it without this, but I think this is going to make it more engaging, particularly for, see, I mean, we got some kids that it's like motivated because their literacy levels and like we got struggles at our school of like bringing kids up to their liter. Like if yeah, our yeah. kids' literacy levels are like low, it's, it's hard to engage in some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But the ones that, that have those literacy levels, like I had one kid, he's, he's like, he's like you say, it's, He's he's super engaged with the uh, chat team. He's like, wow, this is fascinating. Like, 
I literally had like a whole conversation with Chet GPT last night, you know, like, but you got other kids who are like, man, I'm just going to use this to do my papers, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the different levels. So, cool. So, um, yeah, if you want to think more about how that, how we can do that, um, or if, if you got it, go, but I can help out, show up if you need. Um, yeah, no, time yeah. is running out. So, like, yeah, I'm Terry, just go play ahead. With, uh -huh. I'm just, I mean, I'm just wondering um, how the next step, how quickly, because if this step is happening, at light speed, how quickly it's going to be where now comment is hooked into a video production AI yeah, absolutely. or a, a lyric producing AI or whatever. What it's, I don't see that as very far away at all. Yeah, yeah, good, good thinking. Um, the the other part that I I don't see very far away is memory, so that these thinking partners can start remembering. Mm -hmm. what you what you wrote before right mm -hmm. and and so when they comment they're going to be commenting on hey you know in what you said in the first part was this and and so based forth. on I, your login is that what you mean like your yes. login to yeah because because again all of these comments are sitting in a database on now comment so we just need an algorithm that can go into that database and choose which which one of those things go into the memory and which don't? You know, I I don't have that all figured out, but uh, quick, but quickly. Um, and so yeah, the, all of that is pretty speculative, <laughs> which is fun. But um, the um, I just wanted to show you. We showed um, students how to create, how to go to their their libraries. We want you to be doing this too now. Um, and here are the all the public thinking partners that exist so far. You can then go to them. Yours, your screen doesn't doesn't have a an edit. You can only duplicate, but you can duplicate one of these. And I wanted to show you that I had created the TikToker here. And then um, where is he? Up top, and uh, he named it an edgy. An edgy, an edgy. So Timothy right, created an edgy TikToker. Mm -hmm. And all he did was go in and duplicate mine, and he put two sentences in. Hmm. He put in, um, use edgy and pessimistic language and a dramatic and ostentatious flair, right? Hmm. Um, so it, I think he's getting prompt stuff here, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is cool. Right? So then, yeah. so then he made that, tested it out, and then uh, because we're worried about how um, spammers might weaponize this, um, I'm the only one who can make something public at this point. So I go in, make it public, and then anybody can use it. But you can personally use your own, right? So, yeah. Um, I was so happy for that because he's one of my students that a lot of teachers and people put him on the back burner because mm -hmm. he's he's all over the place. But so, he, he, he does this wonderfully. Some other students um, got the idea of creating a character, but they didn't get the and this is um, this is a reflection on how I express it to them. They didn't get the idea that they have to tell that character what to do. Right. Tourmaline. That's tourmaline. Yeah. So this, yeah. So what does what is this one about? Tourmaline. She was she wanted a black. She always wears pink, and she's a black. She was like, I want a black diva, and I said, Oh, a black diva in pink. She said, But I don't want to say the word black. So I said, It's a crystal, a black tourmaline. I said, Then just call it tourmaline. She said, so, oh, yeah. So her description is she's a baddie and she liked pink and she <laughs> she a diva? Yeah, oh, sorry. Yes. And she's from Philadelphia. Right? So does a, but then she does some things where she cancels out the I don't know. So she has to work on this a little bit. Yes. Um, oh, oh, but she gave use all these slang. slang words. And then when the slang came up, let me tell you, they didn't like all the slang. They were like, right. wait a minute, it's being stereotypical. Why, right. why would you do that? Which we, which 
I blamed on you, but that's okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind. Um, but but, is, but worth, but worth uh, where was that one? Oh, it's the fire guru. Fire guru. Mm -hmm. So the fire guru, I, I just want to show you, and I haven't tested this yet, but I think this was a good example to show them. This first sentence here, talk to me the way an African-American high school student in Philadelphia who uses, we, I had written there, um, who uses slang, right? And the student suggested change it to intellectually informal oh. language, right? Which I think is pretty smart. Um, we'll see what it does, but. You haven't tried. So again, the, I think it's a great thing that they can imagine characters being these thinker, thinking partners. Now we need to get them to think about what what sort of rhetorical move we want them to do for the, on the text, right? And I'm not exactly sure how to get that, but they can look at them and keep playing. I think what Timothy did is 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 the move is the right move. Like take one that you like and and change it, mm -hmm. right? Um, somebody and had. Oh, well, I need to let you know that that was the first time I really ever saw that child like have a real smile on his face. <laughs> Let me um, just yeah, yeah. mention the full names. I'm going to stop. Yeah. I know. I want to just say full names for students are here. So. Oh, yes, I know. Um, it's, so yeah. you shouldn't share we, that part, probably. We can, okay. correct. we can correct that. I mean, um, just as a actually, Yes, I got you. I can, I can, I can, I can cover that up. Yeah, because um, it's usually just their first name. Yeah, this is the... the this is, but comment, but yeah. for this page, is different. Yeah. It's it's because it's on an admin page, but yes. Oh, oh, okay. It's okay. I yeah. We could block them here too. But. Hey, so Bonnie, uh yeah, yeah. any yeah. other any is it is it catching on with any of your colleagues, uh other colleagues yet? Yeah, one um social studies teacher, he really wants to use it, but I told him, get with Paul, see what you put you know, and he keeps talking to the students about it more so than me. But I sat next to him today in PD, and uh, I asked him to come here tonight. But he's not here because you have to. Now, the engineering teacher came in the room today because he was asking me to help him rewrite something and use <laughs> chat GPT, help him prompt. So you're the guru now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so my, my, son is, my son is calling me, Bonnie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dad, That's can you do this for Chet Pete? Can you, can you help me over? At first, he criticized me for using it because, you know, he works in university settings and he's like, oh, this Chet GP is going to take your job. Yes. <laughs> no, it's not. So, yeah. Let's so, not end on that note. <laughs> yeah. That's it. So, the teacher came in today and he ended up sitting down. And, and he sent me a text later on and was like, whoa, I really like this now comment thing. I think he called it comment now. He said, I really <laughs> it's it's all good. I mean, when you realize that you can put your own text up in now comment, you could put, you could put, um, you know, the social studies textbook up in now comment. You can like put anything up there and do this with it using the same thinking partners. It's kind of got some power across, yeah. across curriculum that way. Yes. Yeah. Marina, you've been observing. Nice to see you. Any anything you want to jump in with, or I always put you on the spot at the end. You got to unmute if you want. Oh, there Sorry, you can you say yeah. that one more time? You're good. Yeah, I was just asking if you wanted to throw anything in. Um, no, I'm just I'm doing a lot of listening and still learning. So the question that I started messing with you, and you're you're a third grade teacher, yeah. is you gave me some text, a, a short story and a poem. Oh, right. I forgot about that. And I put them up in the staging site. I'll put them up on, on here now. Mm -hmm. And then and I, I started thinking about, and what I'd love for you to think about is, like, what kind of reading buddies would mm -hmm. a third grader need, right, mm -hmm. is a really good question to be thinking about. Yeah. Um, I, I started thinking about cartoon characters. Mm. Like, would they want that? I don't know. I, but yeah, so 
that's your assignment. Think about it. Okay. That. I will I'll work on that. <laughs> okay. Amani, Amani, are you really here? Unmute. Please. Hi, Amani. <laughs> it's okay. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. She knows. Um, no problem. Anybody want to get any final thoughts? And Terry, thank you so much for coming tonight. And um, I can I remind people yeah. something about about Please. any of these social annotation tools? Please. Your responses do not have to be text. Your responses can be links. Your responses can be gifts. Your responses can be uh, YouTube videos. It can be, you know. So to me, what I want to start seeing is how that gets integrated. Mm -hmm. So somebody work on that, would they? So if if you go back to the first the the first one, the one that has a thousand comments on it, um, mm -hmm. on long division. Bonnie's students did quite a bit of image work there around the characters in particular. Yeah, and they, they were using they were using Dali to create those mm -hmm. those images as well. There's a thousand the comments <laughs> in <from laughs> four <laughs> classrooms. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. And it wow. handled it, except that you know it gave uh, it, it it was overwhelming for some students. So. Yeah. yeah, and for the teacher, and for the teacher. <laughs> yeah, that was Jeez. Absolutely. But the but the software handled it. It didn't break. <laughs> Just to say. All right, all right, y'all. All right, thank you all. all thank, you, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great good night. You too. Right. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thanks, Dirk. Okay, where am I?